And to top it off, the music just got spooky too, so... I don't know. Alright, what do we got here? Some writing on the wall? Woo! Oh, hi! Is that Tanaka? Are you that spooky girl that flashed in front of me before? At long last, I found Kazuki. His hands were bound and his head was covered by a dirty blood-stained sack. I'd gone in all business, ready to handle the situation quickly. Get everyone home safe and go back to a normal life. My plans went out the window the minute I made, his cap I made out his captor's face. It was a face I knew very well. Six months ago in Kamakura, Kazuki and I encountered her in a hostage situation gone wrong. She died. The cold eyes and unhinged smile that stared at me from the shadows at the end of the tunnel belonged to a girl six months dead. I stood frozen to the spot, unable to speak as I faced down the impossible. It must be a trick. That's what my subconscious whispered to me over and over to drown out the sound of my beating heart. The girl wasn't surprised to see me. In fact, it seemed that my shock and surprise was what she had wanted to see all along. The fact remained that I was alone. I hadn't told Yukimura where I was, and Tanaka's life was in her hands. It was me and her, a lone detective and a girl straight from a nightmare. Hi, uh, how's it going? Draw a gun, speak to Tanaka, drop the knife. Tanaka, hang in there, I'll get you out of this. Ito, is that you? Get out, run! She's not what you... Shh, don't waste time talking to her. You won't even speak to me? Not even a hello or a long time no see, Yami-chan? No, you just talk to him like he's not even... Like I'm not even here. Yami, I'm sorry. Please save yourself. Quiet. I mean, please be quiet, Tanaka. There, there. It'll all be over soon, and then we'll be together. In the dark. So don't think about her anymore. Why do you look like her? What is this? Look like who? I've looked this way for a long time. What you looking for, Ayami-chan? The bullet in my head? I won't fail- I won't fall for that. Anyone could have read about that case. Ayami, don't talk to her! Run! For both our sakes! Why? Why are you talking her- Why are you taking her side all of a sudden? You said you'd help me! Stop talking to her! I'm not going anywhere. We can both help you. No one needs to get hurt. Heh. <sighs> you mean like the last time? In Kamikura? No, Ayami-chan. No more talking. You're going to sit there like a good girl and listen until we're done. Ayami, forget what you've seen here and go. Save yourself. See? Tanaka is so caring. Even, like, even about you. That's why he promised to help me. Soon we don't need you. Shh, can you hear that? The voices, they're back. You remember the little whispers, don't you? I knew it. I knew it would happen. Now I can take Tanaka with me and he'll help me find the door. Ha, <laughs> it's like when I was little. There were police back then too. <laughs> don't you see, Yami-chan? It's exactly like the last time. It'll work. Tanaka will be with me now. Everything will be different this time. This time, it will let me go. I won't let you take him from me. He promised to help me. And now even you can't get in the way. Faced with the impossible, my mind raced in every direction to come up with a logical explanation. The clothes, the hair, the mannerisms were all the same. But I still didn't believe. It was when she mentioned the voices that my defenses began to wear down. There was no way she could have known about that. I'd left it out of my reports, and Kazuki and I didn't talk about it. I began to accept that the girl I faced really was the same girl, and into my nostrils the scent of cherry blossoms began to intermingle with the stink of sewage. I tried to focus on Kazuki and keep him talking, but the girl wouldn't let him. He sounded strange under the hood, like he was hurt. I knew I didn't have much time. Alright, uh, you want to talk about this? How are you here? 
in Kamakura, I... I... Ooh. Murdered me? No, it, it wasn't like that. I was trying to... Yami, there's nothing you can do. I know it's confusing, but you have to run. It's your only chance to get out of this. Oh, you? Be a good little boy and hush now. You know, it almost sounds like you feel bad about it. Almost. All I wanted in Kamikura was the mask, but you were hiding it from me. I'd been searching for it for so long, Iyami-chan. So many different shrines. Then Tanaka showed up. He didn't look at me like I was some sort of rabid little animal. Not like all the others. No, 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 not my Tanaka. He wanted to help me. Really help me. I, I don't know what that was. <laughs> And I almost believed he would before you showed up. Well, we all know what happened after that, don't we? Poof! I woke up in the dark again. Ha 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 ha! I can still feel it. It hurt me, Yami. It hurt so bad. I was this close to changing everything, but you took it away from me. I wondered why someone so nice as Tanaka would be with someone so horrible like you. So I went after him instead. He even gave me the mask. What? You don't believe me? He doesn't care about you, remember? He wants to help me. But the mask wouldn't wake up. Not like it did in Kamakura. It won't work if it's not awake. Oh, but Ayami, it worked. Everyone always called me stupid, but look at me now. Tanaka and I will be together, and I'll finally find the door. But first I have to send him there. I'm sorry, Tanaka. It's the only way you can help me. I want you to help me, please. You promised. And you, Ayami-chan, you can watch. Even though none of it made sense, like, none of it, the girl truly believed every word she said. When she talked about Kazuki, her eyes lit up as if she really believed he was her savior. The situation was deteriorating and her grip on the knife hadn't loosened one bit. I had to keep her talking. Did it run? Uh, Kazuki, I'm so sorry, but I can't shoot her and she won't stop. She... Ayami, don't apologize. Run and don't look back. Forget what you saw tonight and tell them you never found me for your own sake. Aw, guys, stop. You'll make me cry. I'm starting to see a little glimmer of what you saw in her, Tanaka. I think, honestly, like, he probably knows way more about this than we do, and we should probably just run. <laughs> Though being a horror game, running probably just gets us killed, to be honest. She's smart, too. She gets it. I won't stop, because I need you, Tanaka. Like I said, he's coming with me. After all, he promised to be with me to the end. And the end is very soon, Iyami-chan. Ever since you arrived, the mask is very chatty. It's ready. There's only one thing left to do. All I have to do is slit his throat. That's the way to the dark. Then I'll be able to rest. You've apologized. Now say goodbye. No, stop, please! But she didn't stop. As if I wasn't there. Kazuki never called for help. Never protested. I think he knew what was going to happen to him. Casually like she'd done it a hundred times before. She slid the knife across his throat. Maybe that was supposed to happen? I don't know. Oh, look at this. It's so much nicer in here. Good morning, Lady Fluffington. How are you today? Nya. Aw, glad you're so happy. I guess Kazuki already left, huh? Nya. You didn't drive him out, did you? No bitey scratchy? Nya. <laughs> well, that settles that, I guess. You've been good with him lately, haven't you? Nya. 
If only Yukimura shared your enthusiasm. Something tells me he'll get over it, though. Nya, nya, nya. Do you have to play right now? Nya, nya, nya. All right, all right. Where'd you hide your toy this time? My neurosis went down from that. Okay, so it looks like we're still maintaining the same numbers here. I think the neurosis is like... What is neuro... Hold on, I want to know what neurosis means exactly, because I'm not sure off the top of my head. Neurosis is a class of functional mental disorders involving chronic distress, but neither delusions nor hallucination. So, like it says, it's related to stress. Like, this is how stressed I am. Versus, and it's different from sanity, which I think sanity would be delusions or hallucinations, basically. Not necessarily delusions or hallucinations, but it, would, it could cause that, having low sanity. Okay, so we can go to the bedroom or we can look at laptop. Uh, let's read. What's this? Kazuki must have been looking at it before he left. A shrine. Red paint. It is all the patterns of the case he's been working on the last few months. Yukimura has been giving him hell, saying such a minor case is wasting precious police resources. But bullheaded as always, he won't give it up. Can't say I get it either, honestly. Chasing after some weird kids and vandals isn't his style. It's weird. He's been kind of obsessed about this case, but when I ask him for details, he always shrugs me off. Maybe I'll ask him about it when he comes back. Where is he anyway? It's a bit exhausting being with someone who's on their own schedule all the time. At least he bought coffee before he left. Otherwise, he'd be in a world of hurt. So, obviously this seems to connect somehow to current day, where there's red paint or blood, and there was that weird shrine in the sewer. An elderly man was attacked and seriously injured while emerging from a shrine in Kanada, Tokyo Prefecture late last night. The man, Tadaka Isao, 74, sustained injuries to his head and abdomen including several lacerations and was admitted to a nearby hospital where he remains in stable but critical condition. According to police, eyewitnesses reported hearing a struggle around 11.45 p.m. and shouting from a young, sounding voice. When asked if any witnesses had seen the suspect, police said that the assailant may have been a high school age girl. Local high schools have been asked by police for any students fitting witnesses' descriptions, but so far they have no leads. Citizens in the area are beginning to grow anxious and have called for increased police presence around shrines and temples. Especially around the time students might be coming and going from school in late at night. Local police stressed to the public to remain calm, citing that this was an isolated incident and that they're pursuing all leads. Some residents in the area, however, are not impressed with the police response. Local resident Suzuki Kanwa, 71, points to a swath of random red paint marks on the shrine gate, and cites a popular theory in the area that there is a youth rebellion against Japanese traditional values. Police refused to comment when this was brought up in a recent press conference. Authorities speculate that this attack may be potentially linked to a series of crimes surrounding shrines and temples in the area, but that this is the first time any violent action has occurred. The first incident occurred two months ago, and resulted in the main hall of a local shrine suffering fire damage, but no injuries. Another incident was reported several weeks later where a local resident noticed several dead cats in front of a shrine's gate. Police are hesitant to link the crimes because of lack of a specific pattern. So that obviously seems related. If nothing else, this thing that we stumbled into with Tanaka seemed like, if nothing else, like a copycat, you know? Maneki Neko is Lady Fluffington's favorite toy and has suffered from months of her batting it around. If I see any while I'm out, I should pick up a new one. Who knows, they might even bring us good luck. Q. 
Okay, is there somewhere else to go? Oh, play with the cat. For the life of me, I can't figure out why you love this thing so much. Nya, nya, nya. Well, whatever the reason, I'm glad it makes you so happy, little one. Nya. All right, we got some sanity back, although... Oh no, it was negative neurosis, so that I got less stressed. That's good then. Yeah, so that means that I'm getting less stressed because it's going that way. And I got some sanity. Mosh, mosh. Hello, neighbor. Konnichiwa. Oh, hi, Yumi. Do you uh, want to come in? Nope, I'm on my way out, but I wanted to drop this off first. Uh, it certainly has a distinct odor. Ancient family recipe. Creamy curry donuts. Coconut honey curry powder. But the secret is the five hot chilies that are hidden in the batter. They have quite the kick. These bad boys will clean your soul with fire inside and out. Wait, how are the chilies hidden in the batter? Yumi, I'm not so sure. <laughs> no need to thank me. Your body will thank me after you eat them. But anyway, how have you been? All I see lately is convenience store box lunches and junk food. You need to take care of yourself, like eating a donut. I'd be happy to cook for you two if you want. You're welcome round any time. How about tonight? Or maybe after you're done working sometime. Tonight might be a bit tricky, and our shifts can run a little late. Unless you're happy with us dropping in around 2 a.m.? Hmm, you make a good point there, neighbor. It's bad enough with you clomping around at night. I am right beneath you, you know. Sorry, Yumi. You can blame the clomping on Kazuki. I'm light as a feather. Don't be sorry. It's the price of living below someone so interesting. Then again, there was that one time you started singing at 4 a.m. You were shouting something about the night not being able to end until you sang some idol song. What was it again? Uh, that's okay. You can forget about that if you like. To be honest, I liked it. It was reassuring to hear you loosen up. Plus, I like to think it gives me a window into Detective Ito's real side. You know what I mean? My real side, huh? Well, I do like karaoke. Then we should go sometime. I can sing in English, too. I'm a pro. My girlfriends thought I was ha half. I was half? Half English? I'm quite talented, you see. Uh, that's my work phone. Oh, okay. I should get going anyway. But a yummy. Hmm? Don't forget my offer, okay? Come over sometime. I will. Sorry, Yumi. I've got to take this. Hi. Marsh, Marsh. It's Ito here. Kazuki? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Thanks for picking up. I didn't know who else to call. I was wondering where you'd wandered off. Why are you calling me on this phone? You're not on the clock, are you? Sorry, I couldn't leave this one alone. I think I've made a big break. In what? The mystery of the broken coffee maker? <laughs> nope, unfortunately. That case will likely remain unsolved. The shrine case I've been working on. I think I've found a pattern. All of the shrines are attached to people whose names are said... Kawana. There's so many ways to write Kawana in Chinese characters that we didn't see the connection. It's like our suspect has been going up and down Tokyo, going to shrines one by one looking for someone. That would explain the pattern, how the pattern seems so random. Doesn't explain the weird markings or the random violence, though. No, but it's a start. Had a, big of a, had a bit of a snoop through the records, and I think she'll be in Kamakura next. I'm headed there now. I can be there in a little over an hour. What do you need me to do? Thanks, Ayami. I knew I could count on you. I don't trust anyone else. I'm just about to arrive, so I'll get started on the legwork. Interviewing people in the area and seeing what they know. Meanwhile, once you get here, I'll need more official stuff. Surveillance footage, public reports and the like. Not much to go on, but together we should find something. <sighs> so I get the boring stuff? Serves me right for showing up late, huh? Ha! <laughs> I'll get you a drink after. Promise. Ayami, keep an eye out for red paint. Spin at all the other crime scenes. I'll see you soon. And be careful. 
If I'm right, this person might be dangerous. Alright, see ya, Fluffington. We got work to do. In retrospect, the way Kazuki sounded on the phone that day was off. Under his normal enthusiasm was a hesitation, a little shake in his voice that told me something was wrong. At the time, I chalked it up to overwork. After all, he hadn't been sleeping much in the weeks prior. If only I'd known it hadn't put up a wall of normality to hide from it. Instead of explaining away his obsession with the case, and ignoring him as he tossed and turned, I should have talked to him. In all fairness, I wasn't the only one trying to ignore reality. Kazuki was a fierce investigator. Once he grabbed a hold of something, he followed it, no matter how dangerous it was. It kept me in the dark as long as he could, but in the end he needed me. So when he called me, he tried his best to laugh and joke to throw me off the scent. It worked. It worked because I let it. Marsha Marsh. Hello? Welcome to Kamakura. Konnichiwa. I was actually looking for some information. Information? Well, you've come to the right guy. Name's Magura. Did you know that I'm no mere station attendant, but a volunteer tour guide on my days off as well? A jack of all trades. I can see from your blank expression that you don't believe me, but I'm the best there ever was. I'm not even from around here. I can still tell you everything there is to know about this place. Why does he keep, like, looking sideways? Kind of creeping me out there, dude. Guidebooks, maps, the internet. Pah! All silly store to uh, toys for amateurs. I've got it all up here. Right. Uh, that's, uh, great. Magura, is that Japanese? Um, anyway, what kind of security do you have at this station? Are there many cameras set up here or around town? Uh, cameras, you say? I guess I should explain. I am a detective with the Tokyo Metropolitan Police. Ah, uh, see, I'm really less of a current events kind of a guy, and more of a people and date sort. Some call me a master of time and identity. <laughs> Alright, if I had harnessed my incredible knowledge and ability to examine minute, uh, minuta? How do you say that? Anyway, minute uh, details of events, I could have become a great detective myself. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. Well, okay, maybe this one's a bit more up your alley. Can you tell me about the shrines around here? Maybe someone's off the beaten path. Oh, I know, just down the street there's an old shrine and... and... Yes? The shrine is, uh, old and... uh, nice? Go on? Okay, okay, so dates aren't really my thing. But it wasn't fair. You caught me unawares of that one. I really am quite knowledgeable. Yep, I believe you. So where's this shrine? Easy, <laughs> look at that arm. Whoop. Easy, just up the road to the right. Or was it down to the left? Sorry, directions aren't really my thing. <clears throat> oh, I see. Well, what do you know then? Uh, well, the locals say it has a weird aura to it. See? Bet you didn't know that. Yeah, I'll, uh, have a look around for myself. Thanks. Not exceptionally helpful. Nothing else really here. Give me just one second. I need to do something. Okay. I find it weird that the game has this uh, yellow border around it. I don't know. I don't think that's showing up in the video, actually. That's interesting. For some reason on my monitor... It has a yellow border. Oh, I think that might be the capture software. Hold on. Okay, sorry. That's the capture software. My bad. So once you get close enough to things, then you can, uh, you know, interact with them. 
I love the cherry blossoms this time of year. Kazuki and I will have to arrange a picnic before they're gone. They even managed to make this music sound creepy. Sorry, I had to answer a phone call real quick, but... Yeah, this music is, like, kind of unsettling, too. Oh, no. Red markings? Yeah. Red paint? I guess Kazuki's hunch was right. But why this house? I'll leave it for now. Forensics may be able to make something out of this. Oh, that's a big shine. And a... Kind of suspicious raven, you know? The divide between the sacred and us mortals. The shrine it belongs to must be up ahead. You're probably important. Now this art's a little bit weird. Compared to the other stuff we've been looking at, this art looks a little bit... Like it's all outlined more. It's popping out at me. You know, because all the outlines it has... A beautiful bamboo grove. The shrine that the gate belongs to must be hidden behind it. Oh, uh -huh. hello. I can see something floating on the river that has more red markings on it. I need to carefully fish it out so I don't disturb it. Uh -huh. Okay. Apparently from what I've heard, there's puzzles in the game, but they're all really simple. So you won't really get stuck on puzzles. It's more for like the story. Do we have any more rope? <laughs> Maybe this guy has like some fishing line or something. I don't know. Wait. Something show up here? I love the cherry blossoms this time of year. Kazuki and I will have to arrange a picnic before they're gone. This looks just long enough to fish out that object in the water. Alright. Yeah. This is basically the extent of the puzzles, to my understanding. With some difficulty, I can just barely use the branch to get the object out of the water without disturbing it. A train pass. Oh, I got an achievement. Oh yeah, and you can see the achievements too, because I'm using window capture. That's cool. A train pass, and just like I thought, it has red paint on it. I should go to the station and see who this belongs to. Alright. Is there something on her character's throat? Maybe that's just the color of their throat, I guess. But it looks like... Kind of pink. Almost red a little bit. I'm going to chalk that up to just, like, the art and not that she's, like, bleeding from her throat. Hello. Hi. What can the great Mijara, Majara, uh, Ma Majira help you with? I found this computer pass by the stream. Can you... Uh, commuter, sorry. Can you tell me who it belongs to? Yeah, sure, just... Is, is that blood? Oh, the red markings? No, it's paint, I think. You think? Uh, blood really isn't my thing. It's definitely not blood. Smell it. Smell? Uh, no, no need. I believe you. Right. It's not blood. Hand that here. Okay. A little bit got on me, but it's fine. No problem. It's just paint. Not blood. Nope. Not blood. Deep breaths, Majira. Right. Sorry about that temporary loss of composure. Allow me to effortlessly find the owner of this pass. Dang it. I'll just swipe it again here. Uh, let's see. As fortune would have it, I know the owner of this card. It belongs to Mai, the youngest daughter of the Kawana family. A very interesting family indeed. Oh? And what makes them so interesting? Well, they own a lot of land in the area and have donated a considerable amount to the local shrine as well. I often see Mai working there. The house next to the station with the laundry hung up outside actually belongs to her grandmother. Except for Mai, they're all a pretty cloistered lot. She's usually a very careful girl. 
I can't see you're dropping your pass without coming to see me about it. I know all about those passes after all. I'm the expert on train passes. Mai's a good kid. You don't think she's gotten involved with nefarious types, do you? Not that I'm aware of. I'm sure it's nothing, but I wouldn't mind talking to her regardless. Well, if she's here, she's probably at her grandmother's. Anything else you'd like to know? Uh, that's all for now, thanks. Definitely not blood. <laughs>